Hi everyone, are you actually preparing for the NEET or the next exam? Are you confused how to prepare for it, what to study, what not to study? Are you at all able to have a difficulty in planning, but what do you plan you are not able to complete those portions? Are you having a difficulty in balancing your personal life with your medical professional studies life? And are you ever not able to compete with your friends, peers or your family expectations? If you have any of this, this video is right for you and you must watch the complete video. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Premier Kaur Gupta and in this video, I deal with all these issues along with multiple other problems that you might be facing right now so that your aim of achieving the best out of the next result comes very true. Let's watch the complete video here. Ever since the next was announced, the students really have that fear. क्या होगा कैसे होगा क्या पढ़ना है क्या नहीं पढ़ना है इतने सारे तो बुक्स पहले से थे अब ये नया क्या आ गया एग्जाम देना है फाइनल के बाद यू हैव टू गिव एग्जाम जस्ट आफ्टर फाइनल ईयर यू हैव वन ईयर ऑफ इंटर्नशिप एंड देन यू अगेन हैव टू अपेयर फॉर नेक्स्ट टू व्हाट विल हैपन द स्कोर्स आर एक्चुअली फिक्स्ड फॉर 3 इयर्स आई शुड गिव माय बेस्ट शॉट इन द फर्स्ट ईयर सो हाउ मच शुड आई प्रिपेयर राइट फ्रॉम द सेकंड ईयर दैट सो दैट आई डोंट हैव एनी इश्यूज इन अपेयरिंग फॉर द बेस्ट रिजल्ट वेल लेट्स हैव अ व्यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग व्हाट इज नेक्स्ट ऑल अबाउट Next is nothing new. The exam pattern has changed right from two years back. The exam pattern clearly said that if you are actually appearing for the need, the need exam question will surely be clinical based. The number of question has been decreased from 300 to 200, just like the AIMS exam. The AIMS exam was exactly like this. They used to give you conceptual question, some long question with clinical scenarios, and then you had to rule out the four options. And by the time you, you actually read the fourth, the last line of the question, you actually forget, oh my God, what was in the first few lines. That is exactly what has happened in the next exam. But next is more orientation as to a number of questions has increased in different exams, in different papers. And every of this paper has a clinical along with a paraclinical or a non-clinical input also. So what should we do? Let's start it. If you look at the first main thing, the first main thing is to orient yourself vertically. What is vertical integration? Vertical integration says that when you're reading anatomy, you should know a bit about pathology, medicine, pharma and prognosis. Actually, what I'm trying to say here is, Nowadays, in the Delhi Medical College, what is being done, including AIMS, that they you are being taught the topics, not a subject. So you are being taught, for example, an ITP, you're being taught a pancreatitis. So that when you read about pancreas, pancreatitis, I should say in second year, you're taught about the anatomy again, you're taught about the surgical treatment, the medical treatment in the second year itself. Unfortunately, this is not being followed throughout and uniformly in every medical college. There is where the biggest problem arises. So I want you all to get oriented. So when you read any topic of in second year, ensure you read the histology of the same thing from the first year. So you start with histology, a bit about histology, you go to histopathology and then you may read the medicine and pharmacology so that you understand the treatment, the drugs, the side effects and the medicine tell you the prognosis of the entire thing. But ensure you do it topic by topic. You don't need to read the entire chapter Everything about, for example, if you're taking about the heart chapter as such, you don't need to read everything about the heart in the anatomy, everything about the heart in pathology, pharmacology, and so on. Read about a topic. Let's say an example, you read about vessels and you read vasculitis. You read about the basic anatomical structure of the vessels, read about the pathological, pathophysiology, the epidemiology, and the basic biopsy finding in the vasculitis. Let's take about church syndrome. The church of syndrome, for example, will have a C. Anka, will have a patient presenting with, as you all know, asthmatic symptoms, will have an upper and lower respiratory infection, allergic rhinitis, and will have a biopsy finding showing you glandulomatous vasculitis. Now, this is what is pharma. Now, in the same thing, you will also get the treatment. So, treatment is all about the immunosuppressive therapies. Read about immunosuppressive therapies from pharmacology. I can tell you this will clearly really decrease your entire workload in the final year when you read medicine. But how to go about this, sir? It looks very easy when you say it, but it's really, really very difficult when I do it. So what should you do? See, the basic and the biggest thing you should understand is the word posting is really, really going to be very, very crucial now. You should look at the cases when you go to the wards and each of the case you must read. You come back home and read the same case from your pathological textbook. Yes, pathological textbooks. Now, I'll talk about those videos also. How do I have made a plan for you? But let's first look at the scenario, what should be done. So you look at the case, for example, you have looked at a case of cirrhosis in a medical ward, you come back and you read about hypertension, chronic liver disease and cirrhosis from pathology. You read about how to palpate a liver from the Hutchinson's textbook of or Hutchinson's manual of the clinical medicine. Read about the basic signs and symptoms of any chronic liver disease from the textbook of Kundu, which tells you everything about those symptoms. 
and finally when you talk about the medical part you first read the pharmacology of the chronic liver disease treatment especially read about the portal hypertension there because that is how the symptoms will be there then when you have read all this don't extra burden yourself just understand the same thing we taught also in medicine now what you must do is you can just watch a video of medicine in that portion only of the topics you have been seen in your wards well clinical scenario is a way how it's being taught in the medical college nowadays so nowadays the various uh, you know uh, faculties of the different colleges like for example anatomy or pathology or pharmacology microbiology they're all preparing the clinical scenarios for example in microbiology you are giving a you are given a case a 25 year old male patient presents to the emergency with the chief complaints of cough fever respiratory distress and he has a sputum production the sputum microscopy was done which in the gram stain which shows a gram positive cocci the gram positive cocci was then then with a further evaluation what test should you perform so gram positive cocci in a in a uh, you know uh, sputum microscopy measures you a false cephalococcus or a streptococcus what you must do is perform a catalase and coagulase a catalase is positive go to staphylococcus negative go to streptococcus then you should look into hemolysis alpha beta and gamma and also look at the coagulase to assess it is staph aureus or it is whether it is coagulase negative staphylococcus once you are up to this level go to the pharmacology and read the antimicrobial treatment of the staphylo or streptococcus may be gram positive gram negative cocci that is how you must orient yourself so read everything according to cases and not according to what you're looking at the entire subject so don't have that burden of reading the entire pharma entire pathology entire macrobiology look at every case here on what next so how should you proceed on i'll talk about about how should you orient yourself from second year itself so this is very important you can do two things number one you can look at a case read it from a standard textbook but i would like you to go to in a different manner I want you all to watch my videos and in the videos after watching the videos read a standard textbook then you again come to the notes and then revise the notes so i'll just show you how should you go about it Take if you look at the any chapter for example look at the cell injury chapter that i've taught you so these are all the topics arranged in a topic wise so if you want to read necrosis today read only necrosis do not over disorient yourself ki kya padna hai, kaise padna hai. read only necrosis i'll talk about the mcq solving after this okay Let's talk about a bit about you know there is repair regeneration there is thrombosis embolism shock this topic is very very important especially thrombotic part and the embolism part is very very important here in genetics everything is very important because when you read to read, uh, go to pediatrics every knowledge you should come by reading the mendelian and the non mendelian disorders diagnosis again is very very important here in the immune system i can tell you without reading this hyper sensitive reaction type 1 2 3 and 4 for my videos it is virtually difficult for you to understand the entire medicine so make sure you read at least the type 1 2 3 and 4 hyper sensitive reactions and then you should also go and read amyloid and autoimmune disease its pathophysiology and every disease i discuss it here like sle jogren scleroderma or the mixed connective tissue disorders including igg4 disease neoplasia is very important especially you should read about the p53 and the rbg mutations and then comes to infectious disease in which i discussed tuberculosis and leprosy in a great great detail this will really really help you to understand the microbiology part and leprosy will help you to understand the dermatology part in the final year well in infancy childhood again these two are the pediatric tumors also neoblastoma and wilms tumor are very very importantly asked now this part is very important they go when you move to the hematological part from pathology ensure you listen to my videos very very clearly because here in the first few you know minutes i've explained to you the basis of the hematological part and then built upon your topics to understand the different anemias or different leukemias different lymphomas and every clp and you required to know i've also tried to discuss the basic basic treatment so that you don't miss any part and you do not need to read everything again the same thing from the medical part so ensure you watch my videos of e gurukul in the best best possible way read it again again and again and if you have any issues let me know i am there let's move to the breeding topic and now comes the system pathology topic each of the pathological topic of system pathology has been crafted by me to ensure that you don't miss any any important clinical questions so among this vessels at least if you have less amount of time read the atherosclerosis and do not forget to read about the vascular is very very important in the heart ensure you read rheumatic heart disease infective endocarditis and the cardiomyopathies are must and must remember do not forget to read the vegetation do not forget not to read vegetations well in lungs as you see these all the topics are clinical how can you able to read the medicinal part if you don't know about this asthmatic pathophysiology chronic bronchitis see you are going to appear for the exam in the final year 
So ensure you know about these things right from second year itself. Suppose you are one of those who are actually in the third year. Ensure you watch these videos. If you don't have time, do not make notes. Go to my Google Notes because that note has also been checked by me personally. Ensure that you watch that video completely. GIT, ensuring everything I've discussed here, especially inflammatory bowel disease, is must and must to read if you are going to solve the topics of surgery. Well, liver, again, a chronic liver disease, acute liver failure, hepatitis, jaundice, everything is there, guys. Watch these videos. It really, really make your things very, very simple. I'll tell you one thing. Every other topic being, uh, being explained here, I will first start with histology, then go to histopathology, and then go to the treatment part so that everything is being completed. I can assure you, once you watch this video, you should not have any, any confusion. But if you have, I am there to solve it for you. Okay, gallbladder, again, very important, especially the chronic cholecystitis, the gallstones from the surgical point of view. I discussed in pancreas, the acute and chronic pancreas. This is very important from the surgical point of view again. And the pancreatic carcinoma, you should know about the basic, most common carcinoma in the pancreas. In kidney, this entire thing is medicine, guys. Especially watch the first and two. Renal function test was a very, very long demanded topic from my students. So I've discussed this renal function two, part one and part two from the kidney chapter and ensure you first was the basic of nephritis and then was this nephritic nephrotic syndrome. Now this will be very, very helpful to you when you go and watch this entire nephritic nephrotic syndrome from the medicine or pediatric videos. It will really, really helpful. I can assure you one thing and bet on one thing that if you read this thing, watch this video, you will actually have your, you know, entire work almost 90% done if you have covered this videos quite well. Well, in the lower genital tract and in the male genital tract i've discussed the entire uh, bph the prostatic carcinomas and also discussed the lymphomas and uh, the testicular tumors in female gut mostly please watch the video of cervix uterus you should watch the myomas do not forget to read about the pap smear and definitely read the entire classification and the histopathological finding along with the prognostic finding of the ovarian tumors must and must to read okay finally in the breast I've discussed most of the tumors. You should at least reach the basic classification of the invasive ductal carcinoma, molecular, and the non molecular classifications. Read about what is ductal carcinoma in C2, what is lobular carcinoma in C2, and do not forget, at last, to read about fibro adenoma and the phyllides tumor. Okay? Finally, endocrine system, everything I've discussed here, especially you should watch this video while you're watching this. Ensure you watch diabetes, complications, read about the thyroid glands and thyroid tests and the thyroid cancers also. This is again very, very important for you all. In skin, well, skin was a topic which I had not discussed in the previous workout videos, but without so many requests I got, I put at least four or five hours into dermatology. So if you're actually wanting, wanting, watching the videos of dermatology in final year, first watch my video of dermatopathology, it will really, really cover every, every topic of dermatology as well. So ensure you read, at least watch the lichen planus, the psoriasis and the blistering disorders before you watch the topic of skin tumors. Bones, again the bone tumor, very important topic. Watch osteoporosis, watch osteomyelitis, but do not forget to watch the bone tumor. If you have time, please watch the video of Paget disease, again very, very important topic for you all. The peripheral nerve disease, this topic is again very important. At least watch what is myasthenia gravis and what is the lambert eater myasthenic syndrome, difference of them. Chakrat Mari 2 disease, again a very confusing topic. And also discuss the dystrophies and the myopathies. In short, whatever you want, need to know is actually covered eventually here. Finally, into CNS, I discussed the CNS tumors. I've removed the other part, it's not very important because I want you to now to gather only the important points and leave the others. Well, in I, I've discussed retinoblastoma and I can assure you, if you're watching these videos, I can assure you one thing that while you have watched this video, ensure you come back and then solve the well, you guess it correctly. Yes, the MCQs. So, why should you solve the MCQs? This is the basic point. So, MCQ should be solved for four reasons. Number one, you should time the MCQs. Never solve the MCQs without timing them. So, number one is time management. Second, you should objectively you know access yourself. So you have read a topic, you solve an MCQ out of it, and then you assess yourself. So I have read it. This is how much I retain from it. Secondly, you also get to know which are the important topics from which the questions are being made. You will surprise to see that MCQs being coming from one topic is always coming from that topic. So once you solve the MCQs, get to know that this topic is important and I should read this topic again, again, and again, also from a textbook, including also a MCQ or a guidebook. Mastering the art is very important. So when you master the MCQs, the art of solving MCQs, only when you solve them again and again. I get a very common complaint or I should say a request from the students that when I solve a question, I make it wrong. When my friends solve it, they make it correct. 
I, I, I ask them, so do you really think your friends are blessed extra? They're not blessed. They, they actually are practicing more. So because they're practicing more, you actually getting a fear that you are doing it wrong. So once you practice this again and again, you will actually come into the fear. You come out of the fear and then try to actually divert your attention only from MCQs to reading the concept and understanding of the topic and read it again and again to revise the topic again. Okay. Few other things I would like to tell you here about the MCQs from where to solve it. I can vouch on this fact now that Gurukul 2.0 MCQs coming on 13th of September will entirely, entirely, entirely be checked, made by me personally. And I can vouch on that, that you will have no complaints at all. I divide the 100% videos, 100%, um, you know, MCQs topic wise, subtopic wise. And I also ensure that my MCQs are in 40, 40, 20 ratio. So 40% are completely clinical. 40% are something clinical and 20% are factual and the old repeat questions. So that you get to know everything you need to. I deliberately try to give you at least 50, 60 questions in every, every chapter and dividing them into topics and subtopics. So wait for that MCQs. It really, really will change how you perceive the way out of it. Well, guys, if you have any other thoughts, symptoms, and any, if not symptoms, sorry, if you have any other thoughts, if you have any other feelings, please put your comments below and sure you watch this complete video and subscribe to this channel again. So let me know whatever you want. I'll bring it to you and ensure that your life to crack the next exam becomes very, very simplified and easier. Thank you. God bless you all. Wishing you all the best. Stay blessed. Bye-bye.